So Maya, I want to know what is your favorite thing to do around Christmas time? Spend time with my family. When I was little, I used to think that Christmas was all about getting um, Christmas presents, but but now that I'm older, I realize that it's not all about Christmas presents, and it's actually about doing other activities and spending time with family. What is your favorite thing to do around Christmas time? Um, opening presents. We go to my papa's house and my grandma's, and we have this big meal, we open presents, and we all spend time with each other. What do we do in the kitchen? Um, we do... And we get the eggs and the flour and... Oh yeah, we make you guys. What do we do? what do we make in the kitchen? We make um what do we make? <laughs> um one of my favorites is going sledding. We always go to Kiwanis Park where they have that those big hills that you can just zip down. We bought remember I bought the cookie dough and the Hershey and the Hershey kisses. What are those? What are we gonna bake together? Um I don't know mom. Can you tell me why we celebrate Christmas? It's just like a fun way to to open presents and it's also it's just a fun way to be able to just like move around and like be able to like follow Jesus and just not to be able to be stuck in like a void of darkness or with the devil. So that's my opinion of what Christmas feels like. Who was born in the manger? Baby Oliver. No, that's your cousin. That's your cousin. You know why we celebrate Christmas? Because it's Jesus' birth. <laughs> what? Who is it, Mom? Who, is, who died on the cross and who was born in a manger? Who loves you so much? God. God. But yes. who did God send? Who's his son? Um, Jesus. I don't know. Jesus. Jesus. There you go. Jesus means everything to me. I got baptized because I want to I wanna be closer to him and because I know he's there for me. Like God is there for me and Jesus is there for me no matter what I go through. Who was born in a manger? Who do we celebrate? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. That's right. We're working on it. Hey, y'all can pray uh, for us uh, with one of those girls. Uh, but hey, that's why uh, we're here tonight uh, to celebrate uh, the Savior that we have in Jesus. Uh, and I, before we start, before we get too deep here, I, I want to say uh, I already gave about half of you here tonight uh, a gift, and I need to apologize for it. I I sent out a Facebook virus this week, so I just want to say Merry Christmas to about half of you. Uh, just wanted to say uh, thankful for you and being Facebook friends, so we gave you a virus this week, so so glad you still came. Uh, but in all seriousness, it was one of those weeks. Uh, last Saturday night, so, a, or no, last Friday night, I uh, it was kind of a crazy weather night, if you remember right, and uh, at our house, we have this new toy in the backyard. It's called the trampoline. Uh, some of you uh, have one, uh, and last Saturday when we woke up, we started the week uh, by seeing our trampoline wrapped around this huge tree in our backyard, and so like, dunzo, difficult week. I thought I had fixed it. And then this past Wednesday night, uh, I'm playing Xbox with Mason, uh, and my neighbor calls, and I'm like, I'm in the middle of NBA 2K, uh, not right now. Uh, so I filtered the phone call, and then he texts and says, dude, your trampoline is in the middle of the street. So I hadn't quite fixed it, and the trampoline is now in the back of my truck. It's over. Uh, and then this morning we woke up uh, and found out that YouTube TV is done with ESPN. 
And so that's like a major issue in our house. And Amber discovered that the freeform is done. So like all these Christmas movies that she's wanting to see and watch or YouTube TV. No, 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 no. Like it's over. Uh, and I'm like, enough, enough, enough of the bad news. And tonight, it's good news. Tonight, it's good news. It, tonight is it's why we're here. It's why uh, we're here 52 Sundays a year. It's why uh, I'm in 365 days a year. It's why I have said yes to Jesus because it, it is uh, it's good news. It's good news. And here, here's, here's what you need to know. There's lots of reasons it's good news tonight. Uh, I have committed, especially tomorrow morning, so uh, no uh, promises tonight, but tomorrow morning I've committed to a 20-minute message. So for some uh, kids in the room, and uh, some of you, it's like, oh, that's good news. Uh, so 20 minutes, shortest sermon of the year. Uh, and then, uh, but bigger than that, though, we're celebrating tonight the good news that Jesus, uh, Savior of the world, showed up uh, for our uh, sin to pay the penalty, God gave us this gift of his one and only to make us right with him. And, and so tonight we're celebrating uh, the birth of Jesus. And here's the thing about good news. Whether you believe it or not, like uh, anything good, anything good, whether you believe it or not, you want it to be true. There's a little bit, of, if, even if somebody says something good that you know is probably not true, you're going to lean in. Like if I said, uh, there's no calories in eggnog, you, you think, oh, tell me more. Like, I, I may have another cup of eggnog uh, tonight. Or if I said uh, that cookies could extend your uh, life. If you, that, that would be like some news, like, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know. But, like, I'm going to lean in and hope that it's true. Because that's good news. And tonight, like... In regard to the good news that we're going to talk about, uh, whether you are a skeptic, whether you're just disappointed in how you feel like God's been treating you, whether you're down on Jesus, whether you're uh, an unbeliever or a believer, like we should all want this to be true. I always get a kick out of people that argue against Jesus. I'm like, why would you not want this to be true? And tonight, like, we're going to talk about the good news that we have of a Savior in Jesus. Uh, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from two passages. I'm going to start in Luke chapter 1. Uh, and so he's the third book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Uh, and he wrote this. About 50 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. So I'm going, to lead, I'm going to read first from Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 to 4. Uh, and then I'm going to read a little bit more of the Christmas story. So Luke chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 says this. Many, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Many. In the time that Luke would have wrote this, it was very difficult to write and get pen and paper. And yet Luke says, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. And just think about you, how many or how few people are going to write about you 50 years and who are going to write about me 50 years after uh, my death, 50 years after my life on earth has passed. And Luke says, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Just as they were handed down to those, handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. And Luke says in verse 3, with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning. I, too, decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. I've been working on that word and that name all day. Uh, but Theophilus uh, 
was likely some um, wealthy, on-the-fence follower of Jesus trying to figure this out. And Luke, can you give me the story behind this Jesus that you know? Verse 4, he says, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. As Luke's telling Theophilus, and I'm telling you, Luke would say, I am trying to ground your faith with facts. You need to know, you can know this story of Jesus with certainty. That I have carefully investigated this. And many have talked about it. And many have wrote about it. Matthew wrote about his lineage, and John said that the light has, there's nothing, there's no amount of darkness that could overcome the light that was Jesus. Mark talked about how Jesus served so well. Peter, who who would have had an up-close encounter in relationship with Jesus. Paul had a story of his encounter on Damascus Road with Jesus, and here's Luke saying, here's my careful account. And you can know this with certainty, that I've done the research. That let me share some uh, facts with you that it will help you solidify your faith. And then into Luke 2. We're going to read Luke 2, uh, verses 6 to 14. And it is the specifics about the birth of Jesus. And here's what you need to know about Luke 2, 1 to 5. Is Mary and Joseph were engaged at this point. The earthly parents of Jesus, they were engaged at this point. Uh, they were expecting child. Uh, and, and I imagine they were doing a lot of explaining as well. And so the first few verses that we know, Mary and Joseph of Luke chapter 2, Mary and Joseph, they're expecting child. And they're engaged. And they're probably explaining to a lot of people, this is what's going on. This is what happened. And Caesar Augustus, uh, the Roman emperor, he, he at this point, he had issued a uh, decree that everyone uh, be registered because he, he was going to develop a census. So everybody needed to go to their hometown. And Joseph was from Bethlehem, and they were currently living. He was in another town. He was in Nazareth, which was 80 miles away from Bethlehem. And now Caesar Augustus has issued a decree that he's got to get expectant Mary, his fiance, and himself home to Bethlehem 80 miles away. And this isn't recorded in the scripture, but I'm just like trying to think and get inside of their heads that Mary probably was thrilled to hop on a donkey in some ways to say, I am getting out of this scandal. Everybody in Nazareth knows what's going on. Everybody knows the story about Joseph and I. My family is really looking at me differently. Let's go. I will go. Let's get out of here. Let's escape. And Joseph would have been like, no, Everybody has to go home. So this is going to be like a family gathering in Bethlehem. And when I get there, I'm going to have all kinds of more explaining to do about what's going on. And when they got there, as you know, and as we're probably telling your kids this evening, there was no room in the inn. Or there was no room in what would be called like a cataluma, which, which is essentially a guest room. It's the second level of someone's home. And because everybody was home, it was like the holidays in Bethlehem. There was no place for them to be. And verse 6, Luke picks back up in Luke chapter 2, verse 6. He says, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn. A son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. 
And research says that Bethlehem was a sheep-raising, shepherd-type town. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And something else that you should know is shepherds were outcast, unclean, more often than not, far from God. In verse 9 it says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. I get it. In verse 10, it says, Luke says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. And these shepherds uh, would have been thinking, this is what Isaiah was talking about a few hundred years back. That we knew a Savior, we had been hearing about a Savior that had come. And yet, when the angels show up, they're terrified. And I, I can think about it like this. Uh, uh, this past Tuesday night, Ron Vandermeer, a guy that goes to our church, uh, he told me on Tuesday night, I'm going to bring donuts to your kids on Thursday morning. I said, that's great news. That's awesome. Oh, that's going to be awesome. He said, what time do you get up? I said, we get up about 6.30 in the morning. He said, I'm going to ring your doorbell at 6.30. So Tuesday, Wednesday came and went, and Thursday morning came, and 6.30 went, and I said, I'm going to sleep for five more minutes, and Ron was on time, and he went, ding dong. And if your doorbell rings at 6.30 in the morning, you're, you're terrified. Like, you do think two things, like, I'm about to get murdered or I'm going to murder somebody. Like, it, it is, it, what is going on? And then I went to the door, like, ready for war, and Ron was gone, but there were the donuts. And it was nothing for our house but good news and great joy. The shepherds would have been, like, feeling this times a hundred It says, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. The likelihood is that these shepherds would have known where that was at because they have stayed the night and stayed some evenings uh, in this inn or in this barn or cave uh, with their sheep. In verse 13, it says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And tonight I'm just going to echo that passage of what Luke Relayed to Theophilus, and, and what I can relay to you tonight is this was and this is good news. And here's, here's, let me just tell you four reasons why this is great news, why this is good news. Is a Savior has been born to us. Quotes, to us. You ever get like a gift that's labeled to us? Every Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, we kind of uh, keep our kids at bay. Like the excitement can like get to our kids at our house. I don't know about your kids, but it can become a little bit too much. The anticipation gets a little too high at our house around Christmas at times. And, and so what we have come to do is in the past, we've made our kids, uh, not make our kids, but we've had a Christmas Eve service. And to get them through the Christmas Eve service here at the church, uh, we deci- we've decided uh, we're going to give you a gift early. You have one gift that we're going to open early. One 
to just kind of ease them and to like allow us to get through the night, you know. And, and uh, so last year, Amber gives Mason uh, his gift and he opens it up and it's a pair of Jordans. And I, I'm like looking at her like we hadn't talked about this. I didn't know about this. And, and I was really hoping like, oh, I hope this is, did I get some too? <laughs> that, is this an us gift? Is this an us gift? Is this, you know, like maybe, maybe tomorrow, me? No. Turned out my us gift was a bathroom vanity. <laughs> this is good news. This is a, a Savior that was born to us. And Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, that we talked about this, and Isaiah said it, uh, 700 years before Jesus showed up that for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father and the prince of peace to us a son was given to us a, a, a the government will rest on his shoulders. We've been given this new leader in our lives. And you're familiar with this verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, like us, that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him will not perish but have everlasting, eternal life. That This Savior that you have was born to us. And it was for you. That's good news. And you need to know this, and I can take this from the shepherds of, and the encounter the angels would have had and the invitation that they would have had to come to Jesus, is that you can come to Jesus just as you are. That's good news. Like At our house, like when we announce that we're going to an event or we are going to school, the first question that's asked at our house right now is, do I have to shower? Do we have to get in the shower? And he, this is the good news about the shepherds. Like, you can come unclean, far from God, like the mess you are, like spiritually. You don't need to clean up. Like, hey, shepherds, you haven't been at church recently. Not sure where you're at in your relationship with God. But you, you are the lowest of the low. And we have come to you, the bottom of the barrel, to make the birth announcement of Jesus. And that means that we are all included. That you can come just as you are. And I still, you would think, uh, we, we let you wear pajamas to church. They're your kids last week. You would think that we could still get this. You can come as you are to church and to God. But some of us still wrestle with, no, no, no I got to clean myself up first. And here's the good news is God will meet you right where you are at. That it, you can come as you are. And one of my favorite verses, and we talk about this as a staff so often, is Acts 15, 19. And it's the first church board meeting. And they're having a little conversation. But let's make this a little difficult for the Gentiles to come to Jesus. Let's, they need to clean themselves up first before they come to Jesus. They need to get circumcised before they come to Jesus. And James, the brother of Jesus says, it's my judgment that we shouldn't make it difficult for the Gentiles to come to God, to come to Jesus. And for you tonight, it, you, I just want to relay to you, you can come to Jesus just as you are, that you have an invitation right here. It's good news that you can come to Jesus right where you're at, like no spiritual shower necessary. I, I want to tell you this, that Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. That is great news. I read this week, and they do not know, researchers do not know, uh, if it were these specific shepherds in the story we just read, but it was well known that shepherds... Uh, sacrificed perfect lambs on the regular to be back right with God. And it was a normal practice for shepherds to wrap a baby lamb in swaddling cloths so they could one and then put, him, put them in a manger 
so they could one day offer an unblemished lamb to God as a sacrifice. I don't know a lot about sheep, but many people have told me that they're not the brightest. And so what they would do is wrap these sheep up. So you're not going to hurt yourself before we offer you to God. And wherever you're at tonight, I just want to tell you, like, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Like, that, that means that there is zero, zero, zero pressure on you in regard to your performance. It all comes down to Jesus and his payment for you. That there, there was, it, it's not about your performance. It's about if you came in here tonight thinking, I got to do something to get right with God. There, there's nothing you can do but accept the payment of what Jesus has done for you. And that's good news. And John the Baptist says in John 1, 29, he said it like this. I think this is just so straightforward. John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. He says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was his announcement that Jesus was on the scene as a 30-year-old. Getting ready to go into ministry. There's the perfect sacrifice. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says this. That God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's good news. Then the last thing that I want to tell you uh, in regard to Jesus showing up, in regard to Jesus being the Savior of the world, in regard to this whole thing, whole thing being good news, is Jesus brings joy and peace beyond your present circumstances. That Jesus is and will bring joy and peace in, in the midst of whatever your present circumstances are. And to go really, really shallow, I have this brother-in-law... Uh, We've kind of lost our minds, and maybe you know this already because I've said it before. We've lost our minds about fantasy football. I have a brother-in-law this particular season that is having a horrific season in fantasy football, and I don't hate it. But I've mockingly at times told him, the joy and the peace that we have in Jesus is going to last a whole lot longer than the problem of your fantasy football season. And to be 100% honest and maybe go a little deeper, I think the year 2021 can kick rocks. I cannot wait to turn the calendar. I'll be thrilled. I, I hope God's calendar and our natural calendar, uh, I hope they're synced up. I hope it's a new season, not only uh, naturally, but, but God has a new season in store. But this is what I know. Whatever season you're in, I, it's difficult. Maybe you're walking in. I don't, it's different dynamics at Christmas this year. I don't like it. I just want to tell you this, Jesus can provide a peace and a joy that's going to go long after your current problems. And Maybe your job status isn't great right now. Maybe your relationship status isn't where you want it to be. This is what I know. The truth of Jesus, the, the death and resurrection, the birth, the death, the life, and the resurrection of Jesus, it, it's going to be so much truer, so much longer than your current situation. And I love what Romans 15, 13 says. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you've said yes to Jesus, if you have that hope, like here, here's my like lean in to you tonight is let's demonstrate what we celebrate. Let, let's let that hope in us overflow to the people we're going to be around this next week. And the last thing I want to tell you is salvation in the shopping cart. 
I read this this week that in regard to e-commerce, 69.8% of the shopping you do online is left in the cart. Like you check out and you leave all of this other stuff behind, 69.8% of your items. And Amber told me, it's just a good shot of dopamine just to have something in the cart. <laughs> what? I did a little bit further research, because I'm like, what is up with that? 70% just gets left in the cart? And... The two biggest reasons, the two top reasons that it does is the cost. Number one, that you see the cost of shipping. So, oh, no, 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 that was actually more than I signed up for. And number two is distraction. Is my phone buzzed, or I got looking at this website, or I had another tab open at the bottom. And we leave gifts in the cart and here's the good news about tonight is Jesus bought your gift so Jesus paid for your salvation and so as we sit here a few days before Christmas I just want to ask you like have you received Jesus as your savior or have you just left him like sitting in the cart I just want to relay you to you tonight that it's a free gift. And that's good news. So when I think about Jesus, and I think about the gift God gave us, I am so thankful that he gave me a new leader for my life. I'm so thankful that we have a, a child born to us, that we have a son, that the government rests on his shoulders, that he's a wonderful counselor, that he's a mighty God, that he's an everlasting father, that he's a prince of peace. I, I am so thankful that God gifted us with the light of the world. I'm so thankful that Jesus said in John 8, 12, that I am the light of the world. That whoever follows me will not ever walk in darkness, but carry the light of life. That I am so thankful that I have the light of the world. I am so thankful that I can live my life knowing God is with me. That Jesus is Emmanuel. What would your life look like if you lived your life like God was with me? That he gets me. That Jesus is the same, like what you did last night, Jesus saved you from it. He's the perfect sacrifice. The perfect lamb of God. If you're skeptical, like read, read 1 Corinthians 15. Hundreds of people saw him after he died. To Mickey, a skeptic, that's a gift. Hundreds of people had conversations with him after they killed him. That's good news. He's back. That Jesus is, he's the author and perfecter of my faith. The beginning and the end. The alpha and the omega. The, I love this about Jesus, that he's, that Amber's pretty close to this, but, but he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I can count on Jesus. I just want to remind you tonight that it's good news. And it's great joy that our Savior has been born. Let me pray for you. God, thank you 
so much for sending your everything. And in the midst of a season, we got stuff in shopping carts. We're getting all jacked up in our minds about what this season is about. God, thank you for, for sending your one and only, for paying the penalty of our sins, for extending this gift to us. God, if there's an unbeliever, if there's a skeptic in the room tonight, uh, I'm asking that you'd make a move in their mind, that you'd make a move in their heart, that they would just at the minimum begin to explore uh, you, your story in the Scripture. God, for me, I, I thank you for the truth. I thank you for the facts behind my faith. That you showed up for me. And God, for every Christian in the room, would you give us courage to demonstrate what we celebrate this Christmas? It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.